to drop Machoke and, and Machoke 2 and Machoke 3. And even you, Vigoroth, you, you little rascal. Y'all are doing such a great job at using strength here. I could I could have never done this without y'all's help. Heh, <laughs> you call that strength? Watch this. Happy, show this fella right here that I just met the real power of strength. Oh, was, was there people in there? Yeah, they're dead. Sorry, man. What is going on, guys? This is Dobbs here, bringing you another Pokemon video. And in this video, we're going to go over 15 hilariously overpowered Pokemon. But before we get to the list, I just want you guys to know that this video is sponsored by Datacamp. And I was thinking, do you guys remember that youngster from Fire to Leaf Green where he says Caterpie can't hack it? Like right after the battle, he's like, Caterpie can't hack it. Well, I was thinking that if his Caterpie used Datacamp, then it could actually could hack it. Because with Datacamp, anyone or anything like a magical Caterpillar can learn how to code. Because the beauty with these online courses is that no previous data skills are needed to jump right in. So if Caterpie wants to learn the introduction to Python, well it can do that. It can totally expand its skill set by learning scientific computing. And this trainer's Caterpie doesn't even have to leave his Pokeball because it can do it anywhere with a browser. So Caterpie can just whip out his laptop and start learning how to code straight from his Pokeball. And maybe one day this Caterpie will grow up and be a Butterfree that codes for a humongous company like Silphco and create Master Balls. So if you're someone who struggles with spreadsheet work or, or coding of any sort, check out Datacamp. Because just for $25 a month, you can expand your knowledge just like this Caterpie and have unlimited access to every course available. And on top of that, you can check out the first chapter of any course for free. So be sure to click on the link down below in the description because supporting these companies also support me because they support me supporting you supporting me. What I'm trying to say is these sponsorships help me out a ton, so check it out. And yeah, with that said, without further ado, let's get into the video. Now, to really set the tone for this video, I think Brox's Happiny is the perfect Pokemon to start with. Because this Happiny is hilariously overpowered and hilariously broken in the anime. Because in multiple episodes, this Happiny is seen lifting gigantic boulders with, with ease. Like, for example, in the episode by Beryl Nas Bez, Ash and his friends were helping these workers build a bridge. And at the end of the episode, you literally see a Machamp holding three of these boulders to build, build that bridge. And then you see Pikachu and Piplup combined together holding one boulder. And then you see a Happiny holding five of these boulders with ease. So quite literally, Brox's Happiny is outlifting a Machamp, a Pokemon who is known for its immense strength and a Pokemon that is represented to move things around in the games, like in Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, and, and even Pokemon Gold and Silver. And Brox's Happiny was lifting twice the amount that it could hold, which, which is hilarious. On top of that, in the episode Jumping Rocket Ship, Brox's Happiny is seen holding Ash's Grotul with one arm. Because in this episode, Ash's Grotul becomes tired, and Happiny is just like, you know what, yeah, I'll hold you, no, no problem. And just lifts it up with one arm while it's 213 pounds. And just to top this one off, Brox's Happiny is seen lifting up a gigantic frozen lake above his head. And I don't even know how much that would weigh, but that's just insane. This is just a meme at this point. Brox's Happiny is the definition of hilariously overpowered. And that's why it's on this list. Now this next Pokemon may not be hilariously overpowered, but in the setting that it was used, it, it was pretty hilarious. And it actually allowed a competitive Pokemon player, Sage on Park, to win the biggest tournament of Pokemon there is. And so, in the Pokemon World Championships in 2014, Sage on Park brought a Pachirisu to the final double battle. And as a surprise play, Pachirisu used Follow Me to act as a damage sponge so that Sage on Park's other Pokemon could buff up and sweep the opponent's Pokemon. Because the move Follow Me forces the opponent's Pokemon to target the Pachiritu and just deal with it until it dies. And this insane strat by Pachiritu was a critical part of why Sejon Park won the World Championships. And it's hilarious that it was a Pachiritu that won the tournament because it's probably not even the best Follow Me Pokemon. Sejon Park probably could have used a Clefable or even a Togekiss, but he was like, nah, I'm gonna use my favorite Pokemon, Pachiritu. 
a Pokemon that is of many knockoffs of Pikachu, and he won with it. So yeah, this Pachirisu was hilariously overpowered in this battle. Now, if you watched my top 10 strongest Pokemon of all time video, you know that I added Ultra Necrozma to the list as one of the strongest Pokemon ever. But did you know that you could cheese this Ultra Necrozma, this god, with a level 5 Zora? Yeah, because all you have to do is send out a Zora disguised as another Pokemon and spam the move Toxic. Because for some reason the Ultra Necrozma can't figure out that this random Pokemon is a disguised Zora. So his best bet is just spam his best move Photine Geyser. But the thing is Photine Geyser is a second type move and Zora is a dark type, so it'll have no effect. But the AI for Ultra Necrozma won't click that it's not effective, it will just keep doing it and eventually die to poison. So all this level 5 disguise Zora has to do is just sit there and spam Toxic, which is hilarious. And this is not even a meme, this strategy is mainstreamed in the Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon speedruns. Even in the world record speedrun, the speedrunner uses a level 9 Zora and just spams Toxic and the Ultra Necrozma just doesn't know what to do and just ends up dying to poison. Therefore making a level 5 baby Zora that's disguised as a random Pokemon hilariously overpowered. And man, if I knew the strategy existed when I was making the top to target Pokemon video, I'm not sure if I would have ranked Ultra Necrozma as high as I did. Because it's pretty humiliating not figuring out that you're you're fighting an illusion and it keeps spamming the same move that's doing nothing. It's a pretty big exploit and makes the Zora look hilariously overpowered. Now, in my original top 10 where I go for hilariously overpowered Pokemon, we had the Fear Rattata, which is basically a Focus Sash Endeavor Quick Attack Rattata that can take out pretty much any team in the right circumstance. And keep in mind, this Rattata is level 1. But for the sequel for that video, we have another Fear Pokemon, and this time it's a level 1 Aeron. But instead of holding a Focus Sash, this Aeron holds a Shell Bell because it has a sturdy ability, so it always lives at 1 health at full health. And since the Aeron is such a low level at level 1, the Shell Bell would heal it all the way to full health, therefore making it pretty much invincible. And as for taking out the opponent, just like the Fear Ratted tab, the move Endeavor would be used to force the opponent's Pokemon to 1 HP, since Endeavor matches the HP of the user. And if you set up a Sandstorm beforehand, well, they would just get chipped away by the Sandstorm and end up dying for each Pokemon. So the potential that a level 1 Aeron has is ridiculous, which makes it pretty hilariously overpowered. Now, a Pokemon that is very hilariously overpowered is Tentacruel in Pokemon Platinum. Because if you didn't know, the speedrun rule record for Pokemon Platinum uses a Tentacruel for the majority of the run. And it's such a great Pokemon to use for the run that you literally use an RNG manipulation into a tweaking glitch to obtain it about halfway through the game. And after you catch it, you just become a god because this, this freaking squid can just knock out everything. Without even needing any X speeds because the Tentacruel just outspeeds everything, all you really need to give it is a choice specs and just spam Surf all throughout the game. And on top of that, when you RNG manipulate it, it's level 40, so you have the level advantage for the majority of the run. And the fact that it has Stab with Surf while holding a choice specs just, just makes it omnipotent. It, it's just so good. So it's pretty hilarious to think that you can just catch a random squid on some random route and, and just steamroll the entire game. When he defeats Cynthia, the epitome of all champions, supposedly, it's funny to think that you can just destroy her with, with, a, with a random squid, the Zubat of the sea. So, Tentacruel in Pokemon Platinum is pretty hilariously overpowered, and that's why it's on this list. Now, this next Pokemon isn't real, but the thought of it being real is just hilarious, and it would definitely be very, very broken and overpowered. So if you didn't know, in Generation 1, Machamp can learn Fissure, and then in Generation 4, Machamp is given the hidden ability, No Guard, which makes all moves hit with 100% accuracy. And during Generation 7, the Virtual Console for Pokemon Red and Blue allowed you to transfer Pokemon from Red and Blue to Sun and Moon. So technically, it could have been possible to transfer a Machamp with Fissure that would then get the ability No Guard. Which would mean that you can 1KO any opponent that's that's not flying with 100% accuracy. Which would have been insanely overpowered. Hilariously overpowered. But as y'all probably know, Game Freak caught this before it was too late and made it where all transfer Pokemon would have to have their hidden ability from red and blue. Therefore making the no guard Fissure Machamp not possible. 
And if you ask me, I think Machamp is the sole purpose on why all Pokemon from the Virtual Console have their hidden ability. Because a no guard fissuring Machamp would have just broken the game. It, it would have been insane. So yeah, the thought of this Machamp existing with that possible oversight would have just been hilarious. And probably would have broken Pokemon for, for the eternity of, of every game afterwards. Which makes it hilariously overpowered. Now, a Pokemon card that is hilariously overpowered is the Birthday Pikachu card. Because this card becomes more powerful if you play it on your birthday. Yeah, because this Pikachu's attack, Birthday Surprise, would gain 50 more damage if you use it on your birthday and land heads after flipping a coin. Which is pretty dang hilarious because anybody could just say that it's their birthday and, and just play this card in, in any situation. Like, you could go to a tournament and be like, yeah, it's my birthday, so therefore this card's gonna work today. And the professors are just gonna have to believe you because they're not gonna contest that it's your birthday or not and, and make a scene, so they just kinda have to deal with it. And for that very reason is why this card got banned from all tournament play because too many 10 year olds were out there lying about their birthday. And it just took too much time to prove that it was their birthday or not because you would have to go through their ID or, or birth certificate every time they would play the deck. So ultimately this card was sent to the Shadow Realm and never saw play again because it was just banned. Which makes it pretty hilariously overpowered and why it's on this list. Now, did you know that the best Pokemon to use for beating Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green is a Clefable? Yeah, because if you didn't know, the task for Pokemon Fire Red uses a Clefable to beat the game as fast as humanly possible. Not even as humanly possible, but as, as fast as a, a robot could beat the game. Because TAS stands for Tool Assisted Speed Run, which makes it where you can go through every frame of the game and do things perfectly for the entirety of the speed run. So that means the entire game is manipulated from when you start the game to the end. Meaning that you can control the accuracy of moves or whether it gets a critical or not, the turnout of your metronomes, if a trainer misses their move or not on you, you can control everything. And when you have this power, a Clefable becomes unstoppable because it has metronome. So you can quite literally guarantee the best move possible for every battle and every Pokemon that you face. Oh, is that a Gengar? Let me just use Metronome and guarantee a crunch and, and destroy it. Oh, is that the champion's Gyarados? Let me just Metronome again and guarantee a Thunder Punch and just KO it. A Clefable in a task run is just hilariously broken. And after YouTuber MK Dasher optimized a task run for, for Clefable and Pokemon Fire Red, he managed to defeat the entire game in 1 hour, 44 minutes, and 17 seconds which is the fastest recorded time that this game has been beaten by, and he used a Clefable. And keep in mind, the speed roll record is 2 hours, 1 minute, and 40 seconds, so th this is a humongous gap. So yeah, when you have the RNG of the gods, the gods of gods, a Clefable is hilariously overpowered. And that is why it's on this list. Now, a Pokemon that no one expected to be strong in the anime was Jeanette's Bellsprout. Because when this Bellsprout came out of the Pokeball, it had a funny face and, and everybody around it was just like laughing at how weak it looked. And it looked so pathetic that Ash was talking smack and asking if Jeanette had any strong Pokemon left because the Bellsprout just looked incredibly weak. But as soon as the battle started, Ash's face turned upside down because Jeanette's Bellsprout was doing some crazy things. And this little twig of a Pokemon started making Ash's Bulbasaur look like the weak one and ended up taking it down with ease. And on top of that, this Bellsprout took down Ash's Pikachu, arguably one of the most strongest Pokemon in the anime with his plot armor. So this wheat looking Pokemon that everyone underestimated humiliated Ash's Bulbasaur and his Pikachu, which is pretty hilarious. And honestly, in my eyes, whenever you cause the music silly side to start playing on another Pokemon, you're automatically given the status of being hilariously overpowered. And pretty much this Bellsprout was made just to be hilariously overpowered, so it fits this list just perfectly. Now, normally I don't usually cover things in fan-made games, but this Pokemon was just too good to pass up. So with that said, in the fan game Pokemon Crystal Clear, there is a Magikarp that is hilariously overpowered. Because in Viridian Forest, there's a trainer known as Neff who has a Magikarp with Dragon Rage and the item Berserk Gene. And if you didn't know, Berserk Gene raises your attack stat by doing plus two while making the user confused. And with Dragon Rage, as you guys probably knew, it does a fixed amount of damage of 40 damage per hit. And when you're just starting out your journey and don't even have 40 HP on your Pokemon, this Magikarp is just hilariously broken because you can't even survive one Dragon Rage. And that's exactly what happened to me in my Pokemon Crystal Clear Let's Play on Dobbs Gaming. And I'll just show you guys what happened. So here, check it out. Ooh, a Magikarp. 
Hello. Dude, watch this magic curve have like hyper beam or something crazy. Hoping for divine intervention here. Okay. I really hope it doesn't do like like final judgment like Arceus. Dude, that back sprite. Wait, what? Berserk gene? What the heck? Oh my god! Do we outspeed? What? What? Oh my god, no way. No way. We we just lost to a Magikarp. Is is this real life right now? Dude, what the heck? Okay, don't ever talk to me or my carp ever again. <laughs> what the? Yo, what the heck? Yeah, this Magikarp was hilariously overpowered. And if you want to watch this let's play, I'll leave a link down below in the description for y'all. But yeah, this Magikarp was insane. Now this one is also not real, but there was a humongous rumor about it doing something insane. So, with that said, as you guys probably knew, there is a golden that comes out of the Pokeball in Super Smash Bros. And back in the early 2000s, there was this widespread rumor that said that Golden had a 1% chance of doing a horn drill on the opponent after coming out of the Pokeball. And as you guys probably know, Golden normally does nothing, it's just a useless Pokeball. So this rumor was pretty believable because most people just thought that there's no way that a Pokemon can just do nothing when, when coming out of Pokeball. There had to be something more, so this rumor was, was born. And if you were a 10 year old, 11 year old like me, you definitely believe this and were, f were frightened of this Goldie every time you came out of the Pokeball. And in Super Smash Bros. Melee, Goldie's trophy description actually supported this theory because it talks about its horn drill being so strong that it can 1k an enemy if it connects. So fans around the world thought that if it talks about it in the description of the trophy, surely it can do it in the game somehow. But no, it was just a rumor, a widespread rumor, but if it was true, Goldie would be hilariously overpowered in the Super Smash Bros. games. And maybe one day Sakurai will feel trolly enough to make this a national feature with Goldie in the game. But until then, it's just a rumor, a hilariously overpowered rumor. And that's why I placed it on this list. Now, okay, I know this is not technically a Pokemon, but let's just imagine that humans are Pokemon in the anime, because I, I have to talk about this. So with that said, Ash Ketchum from the anime is hilariously overpowered. And I'm not talking about his, his plot armor, I'm talking about his actual strength as a human being. There has been several times that Ash has defied the physics of being a human. And I I'm just gonna list off a few for this video, just so y'all know that Ash is, is not normal. He is probably a Pokemon disguised as a human being because there's no way that he's this strong. So, for the first one, Ash quite literally jumps up into the sky and, and gets inside Team Rocket's balloon thing. He literally, he literally jumps like 50 feet up in the air and, and just says, hey, this is my egg now, and, and jumps back down. Like, it was nothing. Like, that's something that Blaziken could do. Like, not, not a human, like, 10-year-old, like, Ash. And that's not even the start of it. Let's talk about his insane strength. Ash has carried a Larvitar that weighs 150 pounds. He has saved his drowning Torkoal from underwater that weighs 180 pounds. He has lifted his Pignite up up in the air that weighs 120 pounds. And he has easily held a Cosmo Whip, which, get this, is the heaviest Pokemon in the universe weighing at 2,204 pounds. And he's he just holding it like a, like, a, like a phone or something. There's something wrong with Ash. He's not even human. And that's only a small amount of what he's done. I, I could do an entire video of this, of just going over every insane thing that he's ever done. And if you want that to happen, I'll, I'll do it. Just let me know in the comments. But yeah, Ash is hilariously overpowered. And that is why I, I weirdly placed him on this list. Now, for this next one, I only have one word. Explosion. Because in Pokemon Stadium 2, Voltorb is pretty hilariously overpowered, especially as a rental Pokemon. Because if you didn't know, the pre-evolution Pokemon that you can rent in Pokemon Stadium have better moves in their final evolved form. And with final evolved Pokemon, it's kind of the opposite. They have worse moves, but better stats. And so with Voltorb, his moveset is Thunder, Self-Destruct, Mirror Coat, and Rain Dance. And let me tell you, in Generation 2, Self-Destruct is really good because it has the defense of the opposing Pokemon. So basically, the base power of Self-Destruct is 400 instead of 200. And paired with Voltor's speed, it can do a quick self-destruct and destroy pretty much any Pokemon. So it's just a quick 400 base power move on most Pokemon to take them out. Which is pretty hilarious, you're just, you're just sitting out Pokemon just to explode. So Voltor must have a pretty fulfilling life. 
And not only just a fulfilling life, but a pretty trolly life, because this Voltorb can do some pretty awesome, awesome things. Because in Worcester's Pokemon Stadium 2 World Record Speed Run, he uses a Voltorb to take out a Mewtwo from the final battle. His Voltorb quite literally takes a psychic attack from the Mewtwo and then uses Mirror Coat to take it down in, in one shot. And then when the Ho comes out, he just does a quick self-destruct to do a massive amount of damage. And keep in mind, this is a 6v3 Pokemon battle because the opponent just has 3 legendaries and it's pretty tough. And this little small sphere takes down 1.5 of them with just 2 moves. So yeah, the way that Voltorb is used in Pokemon Stadium is pretty hilarious and pretty semi-overpowered. And that is why I put him on this list. Now, the last one required one word, but this one requires two words. And those two words are Whitney's Mill Tank. Do I really need to explain much more? Alright, for the last Pokemon we have on this list, we have Trip Snivy. And man, this, this thing is, is hilariously broken in the anime. And I know, I covered it in the original Top 10 Overpowered Pokemon, and I, I kind of forgot that I did, but I just need to explain again on why this, this Snivy is just insane. So with that said, as you guys probably knew, Ash faced Tobias at the end of the Pokemon Diamond and Pearl anime season. And Tobias turned out to be one of the strongest trainers we've ever seen in the anime. With his two legendary Pokemon, Darkrai and Latios, and he just kind of sweeped everybody in the league. But when he faced Ash, Ash held his ground to a certain extent because he managed to take down his Darkrai and his Latios. And for Tobias' Darkrai, it took like four of Ash's Pokemon with Sceptile finishing it off. And as for his Latios, it took Ash only his Pikachu because the Latios KO'd his Sceptile and Swellow with ease. So quite literally Ash's Pikachu 1v1 a Latios, which was a legendary Pokemon, and was able to take it down with it because it ended up being a double knockout for the, for the battle. And this is where Trip Snivy comes in, because after the league was over and Tobias won everything, just a few episodes later into the next season of Pokemon Black and White, Trip Snivy, a freshly new level 5 starter Pokemon, faces Ash's Pikachu and defeats it. Yes, this Snivy had never battled in his entire life and was able to take down Pikachu. The same Pikachu who just took down a Latios, a legendary Pokemon just a few episodes prior. And not only did it take down Pikachu, but it demolished Pikachu with Leaf Tornado, a move that Snivy doesn't learn until level 16, and it's only level 5. So yeah, Trip Snivy is definitely the definition of hilariously overpowered, because that is just absurd it was able to take down Ash's Pikachu. And for that very reason is why I placed it on this list. And there you go, 15 hilariously overpowered Pokemon. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you want to support me on Patreon, click on the button right here. I spend days, if not weeks, on these videos, and the YouTube algorithms really favor that, so it helps me out a ton. You get to talk to me and also see sneak peeks of future videos, so there's a lot of cool things that come with being a Patreon. And also, if you want to binge watch my videos, be sure to click on the end card right now and start binging. And yeah, that's all for this video, and I'll see y'all next time. See ya.